All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So, yeah, maybe uh, I hope, um, yeah, some of you have tried our installation downstairs. If you haven't, uh, come by later today. Uh, it's fun being transformed in a Roomba. Uh, there are some testimonials who says that. Uh, so please come visit us and you can also get some fun stickers. Um, stickers are nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm part of a design collective called Automata Farm uh, made of four people, uh, which is me, Simone Rebaldengo, um, and uh, Mathieu Cherubini and Saura Datta. So we are like two Italian, one French, uh, and one uh, Indian guy. Uh, the other three are based in China, and I'm actually based here in Rotterdam. And we do a lot of uh, work with uh, things. So, yay, I got some slides. Um, okay, so. I will advance. So Simone is probably, I mean, some of the crew probably know it for his project with the toasters. Uh, Mathieu did a PhD on ethics and algorithms in the past. Uh, Saurabh really loves uh, machine. And I mean, it's a, uh, we call it the Indian Leonardo. Um, and then it's me that uh, I had to deal with Bruce Sterling, Bruce Sterling working in Casa Yasmina uh, some years ago uh, when we were running the project in Turin. So uh, we really like to think about the future. Uh, we uh, try to explore what does it mean to uh, when objects are extended with uh, connectivity, with intelligence, and we try to bring up all the uh, issues that might arise. And we try to do it in a sort of fun uh, and ironic way. Um, and we do that by designing both interactive products or experiences um, with using a lot of technologies because all of us have a strong background uh, in technology. Um, the project, the products that we like to hack and modify are the most mundane one, the very simple one. Uh, the one that um, people might think that uh, are actually believable, you know? I mean, when you, when you take those simple objects and you, you hack them and you transform them into like a sort of smart mask, then you get bloggers on the web kind of insulting you, thinking that that's like a real product. And we are happy when that happens because, I mean, that means that our fiction, uh, it's solid and uh, we are actually sparking a conversation about things. Um, we like robots uh, and again, not those, uh, we also like the big robots, the fancy one, but we think we really like also the simple one. I mean, a toaster uh, has some robotic elements and when it's extended with intelligence, then, uh, you know, there is a, a, lot, uh, a lot going on. Uh, as I was telling before, we are based in China and China, if you think about it, it is already a bit in the future. I mean, at least it's seven hours in the future, right? Um, and the, the way China is in the future is also because, um, you know, the adoption of technology that uh, the Ch Chinese, um, I mean, Chinese adopt technology very fast without really questioning themselves too much uh, about anything, like all the discussion that has been in things going about ethics and it, they don't care. Um, and they don't care until things uh, go bad. Uh, this is like a self-driving car. Oops! Uh, and that was the manager. Uh, and, um, and so, yeah, I mean, as, a, as Automata Farm, we enjoy watching those videos and, uh, we, and we enjoy really like digging in all those uh, patterns and things that emerge um, uh, when you deal with technology. So, you know, I mean, neural networks, we like to go deeper into those black boxes and try to understand uh, what's in there. I mean, and we like to try to uh, explore it with the, the users and the people that look at our products. 
Um, so I will just like talk about like a couple of assumptions that have been discussed, I think also in those days and then show a bit of a projects that we have done in relation to that. So, you know, things will learn. I think this, everyone is aware uh, that things will learn from uh, our use with those objects. So for example, I mean, we all know the NAS learns, right? <laughs> And it doesn't tell you uh, about what it's doing, how it is learning uh, from you. Uh, Spotify is doing it in the same way. I mean, it learns your preferences and it doesn't, and the way it uh, then um, proposes uh, mixes, then it's totally based on you and very tailored. And then um, at some point, those nice behavior uh, come up when for example, you get bored of listening to the XX uh, because, and, and then you want to explore some new genre, and then you have to hack Spotify and start looking for some mariachi song or uh, Mexican music and so on. And that's a way that you use, I mean, that we in, immediately start adopting when uh, w then we have to train the technology to ref better reflect uh, who we are. Um, so how do we train objects? So this is a project that was done some years ago. And uh, yeah, we were discussing uh, this topic. What happens when objects start disobeying uh, and then they, uh, they need to be retrained. So this guy has some problem with the coffee machine doing coffee uh, in the wrong time of the day. And then uh, he brings it to the teacher, teacher of algorithms. Of course, the teacher uh, kind of uh, works in a, one of those uh, Chinese alley and uh, has her own lab, like where with other like smart objects from the family. And you know, this is like how the teacher oh, teaches the robot. Oh, did you? I think there is some sound. <laughs> so of course, you know, you train it, you, you train it with dust, you teach him how to follow lines and, um, and yeah, so obstacles and so on. Uh, of course, we also have other like punish reward interface that the teacher makes to uh, act on the objects. Um, and then at some point, we started expanding the offering of the teacher, making all sorts of uh, props uh, and uh, shops uh, where we were selling uh, those uh, next future uh, reasonable uh, object. So we have like, at some point, we're really selling them in this exhibition. Uh, like classes for drone choreography, uh, stra social media strategy for cameras, and um, yeah, we had single origin <laughs> dust for uh, Roomba, uh, drone dresses, um, robot hand manicure set, uh, blade proof fetch ball for drones, and so on. So, another thing that always comes up is that computers, I mean, in the general belief, are really good at taking the decision, right? Um, but then when it comes to very complex decision, uh, then it's tricky. I mean, when it's, um, when it's about like deciding which village to bomb or uh, how to, uh, you know, like in, in tricky situation on the roads with autonomous vehicle, uh, a decision taken there has a lot of uh, I mean, it's problematic, right? Who do we blame if the decision taken then, it's a wrong decision? Um, there is this uh, regulation proposal by the European Commission about the, the right of explanation. So that, you know, like producer of intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence or uh, smart objects have the uh, obligation to tell um, uh, to explain why a specific things happened. So the user should be, uh, should be aware of why like his Nest thermostat uh, automatically decided of doing something instead of another thing. 
And, um, and, and this is really about like transparency, right? Like uh, we discussed that a lot. So uh, some years back inside Casa Yasmina, uh, we were discussing this idea of how can we make the home uh, more transparent? What kind of interfaces we need to uh, explore this uh, smart home transparency? So the idea of the smart home, right, is that you take like a, a black box, you put it in your home, that's like the home gateway, and then things happen when uh, the light starts talking to the fridge and so on and so forth. Um, and we wanted to explore that, like, I mean, those are black boxes, let's make a white box, uh, which in the, instead is actually transparent. So of course the black box stand uh, on top of like, uh, I mean, it works like, you know, like inside your general switches. I mean, this is like the interface that you use already to operate on your uh, home. And uh, with this uh, box, the switches serves to control which data are you, uh, are you feeding in or not to, to your home. So uh, you can feed, I mean, you can allow the white box to access data about you. So your biometric data about uh, location online and offline about like what site website you visited for how long why where have you been sporting and all that you can um, give information about the context about the weather how many people are in the house or not and the idea is that just by clicking you you enable this uh, data feed or not um, and then there are like some more uh, behavior that you can program and we thought of using some sliders to tweak those behaviors. So imagine if, I mean, you're throwing like a big party and you don't want your home to remember all the patterns that are happening in the party, like, you know, uh, using a lot of electricity, loud music, uh, drugs, the neighbors won't like it. So, I mean, you want the house to forget all that. So you, you tweak, right? I mean, you don't want to, the house to learn that. You, you want Maybe you can tweak the, the slider to decide if you want to be more public or private. Um, if you want to teach new behavior to the house or if you want um, the house to teach uh, new behaviors to you. So maybe at some point you will see the house turning off all the lights, uh, suggesting, hey, you're using too much power today and, and so on. So this is an idea of like a I mean, how can you really like operate on the algorithm, on the intelligence of the house? It's like, we wanted to create this kind of transparent interface to operate that. And then of course there is like a worker of the future will, will uh, come when the thing breaks and we'll fix it. Um, another thing, I think this was discussed a lot already in, uh, the, uh, in the previous talks is about like this uh, objects objectivity so that, you know, like technology is neutral and, and so on. And, you know, but actually when it comes to like intelligence, uh, uh, if you just show like an algorithm, how, uh, you know, puppets look like, then the only thing that algorithm will look, will see in the world is puppets, right? Um, and, you know, and, and this is really like reflected uh, in, in real life, you know, this ideology that is embedded in every uh, object, it's not the ideology of the object, it's probably the ideology of the company that produced that, of the designer that made them, or the, um, um, of the programmer that programmed that specific feature. So in a sense, you can really like think about products as uh, something that has an ideology uh, embedded into. And you can describe algorithm as uh, the ideology that uh, inspired that algorithm. So we wanted to stress this idea and we decided to make uh, a project where we, again, make very explicit what is the ideology of some products. So again, we started from like a very simple uh, object, a power plug, and we said, how can this object become, I mean, showcase some very specific ideology? And this uh, became politics of power. Politics of power is a series of uh, smart um, power plugs. And we have three models. So model D, which is very democratic. Model T, which is a total showcase a totalitarian behavior. And model M, which is uh, a monarch, more hierarchy structure. Uh, this is how they work.
You get sound. Yeah, no sound. Ah, thanks. This is the democratic one. I guess um, we have the tyranny. I think this video is like the, the format. It's kind of stretched, I don't know. Some lamps are missing from the shot and there were some captions. But what, what happens, to, then now I understand why you don't get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the idea is that it's totalitarian, of course, depending, I mean, um, when the, uh, the guy in the middle will try to drain uh, yeah, most of the electricity from the system and so the other, uh, the rest of the population will suffer. But of course, when you get rid of the, um, of the, 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 the jerarch, the boss, then uh, they will start acting again as a uh, sort of a democratic uh, way. So, uh, of course, we made like instruction manual and we tried to make it into uh, something that looks like a real product at some point. Uh, yeah, we try to, uh, again, bring it in China and uh, show it into its context. context. And so all these um, props or objects that we have been uh, doing, they really work very well in talks. Most, most, um, most of the time people have fun like listening to us talking about these projects. Uh, but then, you know, I mean, when we bring them into a museum, all those design fiction objects, they have a bit of a limitation that people have to, you know, stare at the uh, description and they really have to go through like uh, long text to understand uh, what's happening uh, in there. Or, uh, or maybe you look at the video online. So the last project, the one that I'm presenting down, downstairs, uh, we wanted to go a bit uh, beyond this idea. We wanted actual people to experience uh, this, I mean, this thought that, uh, that, that goes inside every of those kind of design fiction uh, project that we do. So object-centric, um, th this project started because at some point we were commissioned uh, by uh, IXDA uh, conference that ran uh, in Lyon uh, some months ago. Um, to, to present something. And of course, you know, I mean, in uh, XDA, everyone is like really into um, user-centric design and we like to mix up with people. So we said, okay, let's make something about object-centric uh, reality, with object-centric design. What does it mean? Um, how can we make uh, people empathize with objects instead of with users? Uh, that was kind of the starting point of that. So what if you were a Roomba, a fan, or a plague? Uh, how would your day look like? What would you do? So we started asking ourselves all this question. Um, and we decided to use uh, virtual reality to really emerge people into this experience um, and, and see this new perspective. And also, we really wanted to have this uh, kind of idea of like putting like big things in front of uh, uh, on people's faces. So uh, yeah, of course we started prototyping uh, uh, with the low material. At some point we found this, uh, I mean, it was a problem understanding how to make the mask and fitting the VR in it. We found these amazing people from Torino, which are styrofoam artists, like real artisan, just crafting styrofoam. And uh, I loved it. I mean, so I was going there and understanding from them how they would do and uh, uh, thinking together about this kind of stuff. And then... <laughs> And then we presented it. And uh, the first uh, version of this experience 
was really um, was really about like letting people reflect on what does it mean to be like an object in the smart home. Some people really enjoyed it, just like <laughs> driving a Roomba under the bed and going to look for all the hidden things. Um, uh, some other were like, hey guys, why did you do this? And, uh, but I mean, still, we had like some interesting conversation with people. Um, but then at some point, I mean, this, this very open-ended story, well, I mean, it was really difficult to maintain because then, uh, I mean, there was no uh, caption next to the piece, but then we were acting as like the kind of, I don't know, uh, tell, talking to people, hey, where are you? What do you see? And, and so on, creating this conversation that, and the interaction was totally like powered by people. So we, uh, at some point, we asked like uh, Bruce Sterling to write us some stories for this project, and so, of course, uh, at some point, he started like really humanizing how uh, object looked like. So he really uh, went really dark for the feeling of a Roomba that has to uh, eat dust all day, and. Um, <laughs> You know, and then, I mean, he's a writer, so he started using, adopting some uh, narrative, some pattern. So there is always this, there is this idea that the Roomba is in love with the fan because the Roomba like goes on the floor and the fan is like tall and just so like this all day. <laughs> and, um, and then, but of course, both of them are powered by energy, by the power plug, which is like the goddess and, um, and the wife of the Roomba, because uh, he runs on battery, but then he always has to go back to the station. <laughs> so yeah, there was like, yeah, and, uh, and yeah, and then basically, um, this is what came out of it. You can also check it out downstairs uh, or download the app. Uh, if you have Android phone, you can uh, get it for your cardboard. I am a vacuum cleaner. They say that I suck up dirt from the floor. That is true. But I clean, and therefore I am. <laughs> I'm an encyclopedia of the debris of life. Like this one, this modern room in our modern home. This is an endless trap into which factories vomit their products, products which must be consumed. We are industrial products. We wear out. We die there. All these chairs in this space must be important because. A gentleman must always offer a chair to a lady. They think I am ephemeral, that I am just a passing breeze, but I know that I was designed with long lasting aesthetic values. Just look at my reflection in that mirror. I know I've gone back and forth and seen myself 10,000 times, but my goodness, I am so pretty. <laughs> it may look like I'm stuck next to this wall plug, but the moving air from my fan blades can touch every single part of this architectural space. <laughs> These are mere appliances. They're so unique. Because I am electricity and the light bulb high up in the ceiling. That fan is eating anything. I see her brazenly blowing the dust just to get it from this attention. The Trumpa thinks he's so clever just because he has a computer on board. Well, I'm electricity inside this computer. In fact, and the power inside all computers, every computer in the world. Yeah, so um, just 
uh, come downstairs and, um, I mean, being a Roomba is fun, uh, again, uh, so I hope, uh, hope you will visit us or you download the app because at currently, I think we have done more exhibition than downloads on the App Store, on the Play Store. Yeah, so please help us. Thanks. It's actually very nice to hear Bruce because he belongs at this event. Anyway, yeah, yeah, so yeah, so I much. know. I, I don't have a question, so... Good. There's, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a question here. One question. One question. So I'm very interested that you had the, you had the opportunity to look uh, from the perspective of the object and then uh, there was still made this choice made to humanize it very much and go into a direction of, okay, it's eating dirt, while you could have like endless possibilities of it's yeah. just food, or it's an ecosystem, or uh, and, and then feminizing the fan, those kinds of things. So uh, I, I was wondering why that direction was chosen, right? Mm -hmm. it, it seems, uh, and, and no offense to the one who did it, to Bruce Sterling, but uh, it, it seems like a very obvious choice to do that, mm -hmm. while you had the chance to, to really uh, show a different perspective. So I'm very curious about that. Yeah. First literary critique of a Roomba here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, uh, but I think, I mean, it's, uh, um, I mean, I, I agree with your perspective and we have been discussing a lot uh, with the people that have tried the experience, this aspect. And uh, actually in the first version of the experience, uh, as I was saying, the, it was really uh, led to people to interpret how, uh, what they were seeing, how they were feeling and so on. Uh, but then, Again, to really make it stand alone, um, and it had to run inside an exhibition with a very uh, general audience for uh, two months. They destroyed it, by the way. Um, yeah, then we went for like a, a more specific storytelling, uh, which then I think it still uh, has this sort of little reflections that you can. Uh, um, that you can make from the stories that are being told, but of course, it's more, it's more standalone. It's more. Uh, I mean, it has this very strong narrative, and I think it works more as, as a piece on its own. You know, so that was the reason. But yeah, I mean, it, we like having this discussion with people uh, that try it and and thinking about like what they would have imagined. So if you want, I mean, we can turn off the audio when you try it and then you tell me first. Thanks. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.